That anticipation that you could be part of a team that was verifiably going to be the number one team in the world. To be a part of a team that can build for that moment in time and seize that moment. That's what you start to think about, that's what you start to get excited about. Having captained his country to victory at the 1999 Rugby World Cup, John Eels understands what it takes to win the sport's ultimate prize. And with the start of Japan 2019 now firmly on the horizon, the 48-year-old reflects on where a team should be with a year to go. One year out is pretty important because by that stage, you want to have all the players who are going to make up your team having had international experience. You may get a bolter, but it's unlikely that you're going to have someone who hasn't played international rugby a year before who's going to you know, be a, have a big impact at a World Cup. So you want to be starting to narrow down your squad and narrow down very clearly how you're going to play the game. You don't want to be reinventing yourself a year out. So from a selection perspective, what the coaches would be looking for, they'll be looking for who can perform in the biggest stages and perform consistently on the biggest stages. And they would have those people in their mind. So from a team like Australia, you're going to look at the, the, the David Pococks and the Michael Hoopers. They're, you know, they're never far from, from their best. And uh, even when they're not at their best, it's still outstanding uh, standards. So you want to build a team of consistency like that. So watching who performs well on the biggest stages and giving them more and more of a go. Competitiveness is important because it means that there's pain there and it means you'll keep growing. If you're really comfortable with the squad at any given point in time, some people can relax. A human being is a strange beast at times. And even though you might say, I'm not complacent, not complacent, not complacent, unless you're a special breed, you, you know, people can cut a few corners if they don't feel the pressure is on them. So creating that right amount of tension in a squad is really important. The key thing is that the basics of the game have always been a, a core truth, and you need to get that right. If you get that right, then, then it gives you the right to try to do things that are a bit probably more difficult once you get the core skills right. At this stage of the game, they'd be starting to think, well, what's the personality of this team? What is the game plan that we can build this team so that we can credibly say that we can be the best in the world at whatever it is that we're doing? Because if you want to win the World Cup, you've got to be the best in the world at something. And that something is going to be different for each, you know, any, each and every team. But the All Blacks can credibly say they can be the best in the world across a range of skills and um, tactics. Whereas most other teams in the world are probably going to have to be a little bit more choosy. That's about how smart you can play the game. I think there's a real determination in the group. There's some world-class players, and you're not going to win without world-class players. I don't think they've been able to get it together as a team consistently, not since the 2015 World Cup. And, and so I think they'll be looking for some validation that what they're doing is working. And at the moment, you had a couple of tough games against New Zealand, but then good win against South Africa. You know, it's pretty tough competition. And then it'll be interesting to see how they go with the tour over here at the end of the year. So I think there would be some belief there, but if I was to you know, think, make comparisons, they're probably just a little bit behind the curve of where we were, because by this stage, we were starting to be pretty sure that we had a genuine chance. I think it'll be the most even World Cup ever. You'll have New Zealand who, there'll be huge expectations on them, but they're beatable, uh, but they're going to win a lot more games than they lose. You're going to have to be spot on any particular day you come up against them. But then you've got this very level playing field with every other team in the world capable of beating, beating anyone else, really. You know, maybe the next 10 teams are all capable of beating each other on the day. Now, some of those 10, I think, are capable of beating the All Blacks. You know, it's going to be a really, really interesting mix.